Welcome to Between Over and Next with your hosts, Holly and Robert, a happily married couple who explore the space between what was, what is, and what's to come. From career changes to navigating life's uncertainties, this dynamic duo will empower you to live your happiest life at every age and stage. So get ready because your journey with Holly and Robert starts now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Between Over and Next. Hi, Holly. Hi, Robert. So today is a little bit of a uh, reunion for you, if you will, because we get to talk with a high school friend, right? Yeah. Yeah. Way back in the Stone Age of cassette <laughs> players <laughs> and albums and AM radio. Yeah, so so your friend, do we call him Howard now? Howie. I mean, well, we call him Howie. His name is Howard Waltriker. And you got to love the power of Facebook and Facebook Messenger because it truly is a connector and it gives people an opportunity to reach out, you know, and to connect actually with people no matter where they are in the world. Right. Well, we, we were in touch with Howie a number of years ago. Seven years ago Seven when years. I started Seven. my Spinning for Health with Holly page right. so, on Facebook. Right, because he's he comes from the, the fitness world. Yes, he's actually a renowned expert in tennis training and fitness, and he's worked with top athletes around the world. In 2001, he established a gym in Denver, Colorado, where he introduced his groundbreaking half-hour power classes, a proprietary training system for athletes. And what I thought was so interesting about that, because he had the in-person gyms, but he had also an online component, I invited him to be interviewed on my Spinning for Health with Holly page, which you beautifully recorded and is still available. And the link will be in the show notes because it, he gave actually some tips. Yeah. You know, in that episode, because we always look to educate and elevate your lives. So. But last year, OK, he self-published a book and this is what he wrote to me. He sent me a Facebook message last year about this time. Mm -hmm. And he said, I think you might get a kick out of this. My book was my book as Facebook's oldest intern is live on Amazon. It's a fun 60 minute read or so. Would love to hear what you think about it. It's inspirational and gives people hope, which is what you're all about. So first of all, he knows who I am, you know, having known him all these years since high school, but we never had, it was, it was a very casual friendship. And but we've, the, we've actually strengthened our connection and relationship through the power of Facebook. Right. And, but you know, it just, his, his story just fits so well with, with what with, we're doing yeah, now. Yeah, what we're doing now. So, so I ordered, I ordered no the book. No coincidences. No coincidences. I ordered the book and after reading it, right, and it really was just an hour read, like you said, I, I talked to you and knew that his story would be a perfect fit for our podcast between over and next because it is about the power of reinvention and inspiring others. So the book, Facebook's oldest intern, is a captivating 106-page book that is a powerful reminder that embracing change and taking risks can lead to incredible possibilities regardless of age or background. Before venturing into the fitness industry, Howie had a successful career as a software engineer, which he's going to share more about in today's episode. He's 61 years old, married, a father of two, and I asked him, why did he write Facebook's oldest intern? I felt I can motivate people and inspire. You know, you, hit a, you get a certain age and it just becomes harder when you try to reinvent yourself. I mean, you know, can you do it? Do you believe you can? And, and I did it and I wanted to share that to, to show people, yes, it can be done. It's not easy, but you can do it. And I was proof that you can do it. Those are the two main reasons that I wrote it. Did you ever envision yourself being a 60-year-old starting over again? 
No, I had a good thing going on. I had a couple of gyms going. I had and I had my gym inside a big gym, and I had plans for franchising and and expanding. Everything was great. I mean, I couldn't complain. And then what happened? The pandemic. I just couldn't keep paying rent. I'm in high rent districts. I just couldn't keep that going. So what was I going to do? I kind of looked backwards to look forward, and. You know, the, the only thing I could do, the other skills that I had was getting back into, into IT. You know, I was a programmer for Ross Perot back in the day. So did I ever see myself doing that? No. I talked to a friend who was a recruiter and he said, Howard, it's, it's just going to be very, very difficult. Number one, I haven't touched it in over 20 years, right? Forget about the age, but I haven't touched it in 20 years alone. It, it, it and you me- certainly didn't have a current resume. No, my current resume right. was, was a gym owner, entrepreneur. Yeah. So let's discuss what happens next as you decide to switch careers, navigate the job market, and re-enter the workforce. Describe the obstacles you had to overcome. I kept sending out resumes and talking to people and networking. And I just kept getting no answers. I, I couldn't get an answer to anyone. And I thought I was a perfect fit for some of these companies. Not only that, I had connections. So for example, my cousin is the chief medical officer at Johnson and Johnson, and they had a return to work program there as well. And that's the return to work program to step back a second. So people understand it was created for women coming back to the workforce after, after having a family, that's what it was created for. I applied and they knew my name. They said, are you related to Joanne? I said, yes, she's my cousin. Okay, great. I thought, okay, I have an in, maybe I can interview something. (laughs) Right. Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Then we had a connection. My wife's sister is friends with the CFO of Moody's. And I talked to him. We had a nice chat. The next day, obviously, I get an email from the person in charge of their return to work program because he's the head guy. We talk a little bit and then ghost me. Nothing. So then the concern becomes the pivot to move from one career path to another, right? It becomes increasingly difficult to make that move for someone. Yes. Now, the thing I had going for me was I did do that in the past. So I did have that experience. And what I was hoping to do was combine, you know, hey, I was an entrepreneur. You know, I I ran my own business. I bring other things to the table. I look at things differently. That is what I was hoping they would see. In the real world, you know, you you would sit down, you would take your time. You you don't need to do something in, in a couple of minutes, right? But this is Facebook, and it's the best yeah. of the best. They've been doing it a long time, and it seemed to have worked. You are invited to interview with what you called brainiacs. <laughs> yeah. And you, you said you studied, you practiced, you prepped. So share with us your strategy, and how did this experience compare to interviewing 30 years ago? So this one, which I called the brainiacs, because... I had a habit, like when I had my gyms, I, I like to look people up on LinkedIn, see what they're about, you know, see, you know, see what they're into. And oh my God, you know, they all had these advanced degrees and this one guy, especially had three degrees from Stanford. So as you know, they didn't have this 30 years ago, by the way, all these behavioral questions, if you're familiar with that. And what that is, they say, you know, tell me about a time when you had you know, a conflict. How did you handle that? So again, I had the technical questions I had to prepare for. Now, I already prepared for the others, which were much easier. Now I had to get ready for this. And the recruiter gave me things to do, like websites to go on and practice. Again, it was slow going. I just kept, I kept plugging away. It was, things were taking me forever, but I would get it right. But you did get hired, didn't you, Howie? So I get a call. I listen to the voicemail. It's the recruiter. Call me. So she doesn't say anything else. I'm like, okay, well, she's not, is she calling me to tell me I don't have it? Or is she calling me, you know, what's this going to be? <laughs> so I wait the next day. Of course, that night was a sleepless night, as you can imagine. I call her. She goes, Howard, you were really interesting. This has never happened before. You had two people say very strong, strong hire. One person, I know exactly who it was, of course, the two technical that did okay. The behavioral, I'm sure, was like, ah, eh, you know, he... He was, he could go either way. He wasn't saying yes. He wasn't saying no. And of course that last guy, do not hire very weak, <laughs> <laughs> which I was expecting. I thought I blew it. All I had to do was halfway decent with that guy and I would have been a lot. So I was worried. So she said, you know, 
we talk to the management, we talk to, you know, whoever we talk to, it's been a long day. We're in unusual circumstances, the pandemic, we're going to give you the benefit of the doubt. We'd like to make you an offer. I couldn't believe it. Especially she's, she told me how much they were going to pay me. And then on top of that, a sign on bonus, I was falling on the floor. And she said, you know, take a couple of days thinking about it. I don't have to think about it. Yes, yes, yes. I want to, I'm going to work with the best of the best. At my age, that, 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 that doesn't happen. It's never been done before, ever. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. So now, what was it like to step into that culture, right, that, you know, it's almost like kind of like stepping out, like you, if you were in a coma. Now you step in, into a whole new culture where okay. people are – a fraction, let's start with, of your age. Were you immersed in the culture or were you protected from the culture as in that? You program? know, that's an interesting question. I always thought for a while, in the beginning of it, I thought I was kind of being protected. And I'll tell you why. And I never found out if I was if this was right or wrong. Because we had a when we started the internship, we have a cohort. Now in this cohort, there were 13 of us. I was the only American born. I was also the only male as well. But before you ask me about the culture from 30 years ago and this, mm -hmm. I want to tell you another story to show you the, the difference as well. I'm going to go back to EDS because, you know, Ross Perot and, and Zuckerberg is you know, completely different. So back at EDS, if you went to the bathroom without your jacket on, right, go to the bathroom without your jacket on, it was grounds for termination. Okay. Anytime you left that desk, that jacket had to be on. It was all blue, gray suits, you know, perfect corporate. Now on the with the Facebook, Meta, you wear whatever you want, right? Shorts, T-shirt, nobody cares. Did that take a little getting used to? Were you overdressed the first few days? No, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love In fact, you know, EDS, you couldn't have facial hair, anything like that. No, I loved it. Facebook, they don't care about that. 30 years ago, EDS, you know, we had testing teams. We had, you know, you, you make a one-word change, that thing went to who knows how many people to look at. Sure. Here at Facebook, Meta, I just have to have one person. It's kind of a model I think more corporations should take. I mean, like we have a couple of, of friends in the corporate space, and it seems like they're spending so much time dealing with just the corporate stuff and instead of getting work done. And I'm like, well, oh, when do you guys yeah. do actually work? You know, right. you're getting you can, so exactly. many approvals and committees, and that, you know, exactly. when does the actual work happen? <laughs> right, right. Exactly. And so right. it was night and day, night and day. And, yeah. that, and, and that's something that I really enjoyed about working at, at Facebook Matter because you actually just, you did it and went in, you could see, and, and I knew what I was doing, I could see it. But, I, I, so, but you also mentioned, okay, I'm quoting from the book, the various oddities of office interaction. So a couple of things about that. So and I'll never forget it again, like all these things. The very first meeting we had, it was an orientation meeting, by the way. So everybody was involved in that. The only people who knew I was in return to work, by the way, was my manager and, uh, and 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 it was up to me if i wanted to tell anybody so we have this meeting and they it was like how many were there about us in the orientation over 200 250 something like that they broke us up into like groups of 10. so we get in there the goal was to tell something you know tell us about yourself you know what, what team you're going to be working on what are you going to be doing all right so we get on there and you know up comes the pop-up everyone's on there in the checkerboard all 10 people <laughs> and everyone's just staring at each other no one would say a word. So I took control of the meeting. I just said, hi, I'm Howard. I said, what we need to do is tell us about ourselves. And they said, let's go in the order of the month you were born. So I start. Anyone born in January? Nothing. February. March. Wait, wait, wait. February. I'm February. February? Okay, go ahead. So I took control of that. You know, I found that these really brilliant people were, you know, the, the communication skills weren't as good, right? They were brilliant, put their head down, get their work done. But when it came to conversing, and I... It, they've had a harder time. Not everybody, obviously, but a lot. Now, some of that could have also have been culture, right? Then I had my mentor, right? Everyone in the return to work, yeah, I had a mentor, right? You know, he's like 26, 28 years old, something like that. <laughs> so he gives me this problem to do, right, to help him out. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it, I'm like, ah, what the hell are you asking me? I have no idea what you're asking me to do. So I, I you know, I had to text him back. That's the way they do it. He texts me. So we go back and forth between these texts. Right. And then I finally say to him, can you just get on the phone? So what are some of the those top lessons that you learned, those takeaways 
the biggest know, lesson, learned. and I'll tell you why it was the biggest lesson, that I, I, I proved to myself that I can do a- anything, right? I can learn anything I need to learn to get the job done. And I'm going to tell you why. Because over at Facebook, you can't Google anything. I don't mm-hmm. mean you can't use Google. Meaning they have their own internal tools, right? So you can't figure out how to do it by Googling it. You have to learn it yourself, ask questions. And that's what I would do. So that was a big, pretty big deal. I mean, at least for me, because it still took me some time, but I was able to do it. And that was a big takeaway that that I can learn this stuff, right? Even though it's, you know, this is all different. It takes time, but I can do it. And I did. And I proved to them that I could do it. I think a lot of that is because you did own your own business and you enjoy an entrepreneurial lifestyle. So you were actually able to build the confidence and the courage needed to do whatever it took. Well, it's funny you say that, you know, so they have this coach that they, they pay for, which was awesome. I think it was called Better Up. And she always told me, she said, Howard, make believe you're an entrepreneur. Like you said, you, you always had to figure stuff out. I didn't know everything when I was only business. I didn't know marketing and this web stuff. And you know, I knew training. That's all I knew. But I figured everything out. She said, make believe it's your own business. Go with it with that perspective. It's your own business. And that's what I did. And, and I, and, but also internally, I'm very, my manager called me a bull. He goes, I finished a lot of stuff before other people did other teams. He said, you know, he said, I'm dogged. I just kept going. I don't stop until I finish it. As you're going through this and, and you're, you're kind of describing, right? What it is that you, you brought to the table, to the table here. Could the 30 year old Howard have gotten this job? Robert, that's a, that's a great question. I don't think so. No. And, I, and I'm gonna tell you why I really believe that now the 30 year old Howard was a superstar. I mean, I was able to code with the best of them. I mean, without a doubt. They liked that I was an entrepreneur. They liked that background because I was different. Everyone knows the skills. But what's different? What, what else can you bring to the table? Have you ever run a business before? Do you look at data completely different than everybody else? That was a big part. And I really believe that was part of the reason that 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 they took me that I that I got accepted. So that was a great question. So being older and wiser really worked to your advantage in that situation. What inspires you? What inspires me is good food, healthy food, not settling for you know whatever's out there because you're tired and I, I mean I'm tired too a lot of times, but I don't want to make dinner, but I make dinner every night. Every night. Right? And what makes you happy? What makes me happy is I like activity. I like physical activity. I like being outside. I like hiking. I like sports. Just being active is what is what makes me happy. I will also make the happiest family, right? Obviously, I love being around my wife and my kids. And and, and in fact, you may be the happiest if we when we all do it together. Like when we all went skiing over Christmas, that was that was great. If we all go to a restaurant together or you know, whatever it is. That that makes me happy. So what's next for Howard? Well, that's the interesting thing. See, another reason I wrote this book was I thought maybe I'd go out on, on speak and just do some speaking about it, motivational speaking or inspirational speaking, something like that. But I haven't started with that yet. So in the meantime, I'm back to where I was two years ago. I'm looking to get back in, you know, doing it, being a data engineer now. I have Facebook on my resume, but it's not as easy as it seems to be because As I mentioned earlier, Facebook has its own internal tools. So I don't have experience with a lot of the tools that people want. They love Facebook because if you could work there, you could work anywhere, right? I gave my final presentation for my internship and I started the speech, my talk off with who said younger people are just smarter. Of course, nobody knew. There were managers in there, directors, everyone listening. (laughs) Nobody knew. I said it was Mark Zuckerberg. And I said, I agree with him. They are. I look around the room here and everyone is so brilliant. They know everything. But what they don't have and what I brought to the table was the life experience. And that's what I brought to Facebook. So you know what? You made an impact. I think I did. The people that you met. It was a meaningful experience. I want to leave our listeners wanting more because I really want them to read the book. So there is so much more that everyone can learn about Howard's story. and, And definitely it's so relatable and relevant to today on so many levels. Yeah, and you know, I'm not going to leave you listening to one thing, something that is in your hands when you get a little older. 
Don't act old. Don't don't look old. I mean, if you need to lose weight, I'm sorry, but you, you need to do it. You need to lose weight. You need to have high energy. If you need a new hairstyle, get it. Look and act young. That's right. that that's it. It may sound right. harsh, but I think that's that's key. Yeah. I yeah. think that's awesome advice. It is. It is. Well, I'm just yeah. thrilled that you joined us today, Howie. No, that was great. That's one yet by far. <laughs> oh, thank you. Exactly. Well, by far. Like- We're looking forward to everybody hearing your story. There is no question that Howie's story is all about the power of reinvention and the courage it takes to pursue a new career path later in life. It was clear, you know, and and you don't, it doesn't impact you until you are at around this age, okay, that because of age and purely because of of the number assigned to how long you've been on the planet really impacts your ability to successfully interview for a position as much as whatever the laws say or anything else right of how there's not supposed to be age discrimination there is. or any of there, there, there is. is there is and there is. and there's no question <laughs> that what no 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 oh. and you, there's no way to mask it right like you don't have to you, i i don't think they're allowed to ask you your birth date like how old you are on an application no I'm but it sure. became self you know, evident oh based immediately on, immediately based on his experience but you know it was all about his ability to adapt back to the corporate culture, right? Coming, he was in, in the corporate world to entrepreneurship back, you know, Facebook might be a mix of the two, but his position was, 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 you know, Facebook, it's a corporate environment at the end of the day. Sure. And, and, and the way they, they, and listen, the, you know, I mean, we're talking about, you know, now, you know, here's one way that information can hurt you, right? I, I I look and you see on, I think it's LinkedIn or one of the other boards, when they when people post jobs, like mm-hmm. openings, you know, it says, it tells you how many people have applied for that particular yeah, job. Right, a lot. You know, and it's like, there's a lot oh, of people. See buying. how you compare to 375 people who have already applied, you know, to this. And it's just, you know, dawning, like he said, like even with connections that he had, right, quote, on air quote connections, right. he couldn't even get an interview. So anything's possible, everybody. I mean, really, Howie's experience stands as a testament to the idea that age should never hinder the pursuit of one's dreams. And with the right mindset, success is within reach for everyone. Howie's story is a powerful reminder to never give up on your aspirations, regardless of age. So we encourage you to embrace new opportunities, learning, drawing from the experiences that you've had are definitely the key ingredients to achieving whatever is in your reach. Yeah, and and I have to say, even though it was a challenge for Howie, given his contacts in, in certain situations, we are firm believers in the power of your connection, your network. Intuitiveness. I, well, I intuitiveness. Yes, absolutely. And not and not to be reluctant to tap into your network because every you know, think about it. Everyone in your network, if they were doing it right. Mm would be doing the exact same thing in that position. You know, Why Robert, wouldn't they? Robert, if you don't ask, the answer is always no. Sure. Sure, but it's so but it's it's just psychologically so daunting because mm. we have so much information, right? There's other sites that list like what is it? Glassdoor? Indeed. I think but no, no, that list oh. about how it is to work at certain companies. Oh, with the reviews. And what reviews, reviews. and the climate, you know, and and all of that. What I really enjoyed learning is that he really, he taught them a few things too. The, the people, the younger generation. Well, those you that know? were paying attention. 
you know, those that weren't, you know, again, we were talking about this just yesterday about someone, you know, who's in, you know, more mature can relate easier to someone younger than them because we've been there. Right. Right. We've lived through that portion of life. And if we were paying attention, we remember and understand what it was like. But we do talk from experience. So I think it's a bit more challenging for someone who's younger to relate to someone who's older because they haven't lived that portion of their life yet. So there's no, you know, they can't necessarily, you know, when you're in your 20s or 30s, you know, to think about, you know, what it might be like in your 60s. It's they something can, like they can't, you can't They even can't visualize. put themselves in those shoes. The other thing I think is a really cool part that how he reached out to me is that he actually self-published a book. And I think that that's a whole other realm of people sharing their story. We love to share stories through our podcast, Between Over and Next, and through our blog articles and our, and, and, and every channel we have, we want to share the power of story. But self-publishing a book, I love that he did this. And, and, and technology gives us the ability to do so. It, you know, this would have been out of reach for 99.9% .9 of the population that wants to write a book well, in he, the past. And now it's completely possible for anyone and everyone with access to a computer no, I hope to, you will, to, um, to do that. Invest and a story to tell. On, in this book, I, we highly encourage it. It encapsulates Howie's inspiring journey and the valuable lessons he's learned along the way. So here's to Howie and Facebook's old stint turn and whatever your next big thing is. So thanks, everyone, for listening to Between Over and Next. We encourage you to, to subscribe. If you like what you've been hearing, please make sure that you check the subscribe button in whatever podcast platform you've been listening on or watching on. Certainly, if you enjoy watching us on YouTube, you can just hit the subscribe button right there and you'll get notification of our latest episodes that get released every Tuesday. So whatever platform you're enjoying our content on, you can make a notation in there via subscribing and you'll get notification of all of our latest episodes to remind you that they're there to listen or to watch. So we're here to cheer you on. So join us. Yes. And thanks again for listening and watching. Thanks for tuning in to Between Over and Next. We hope you enjoyed this episode and found it meaningful and insightful. If you value it to be worthwhile, please share it with your friends and family. We would really appreciate it if you could take a moment to write a review for us. Your feedback will help us continue to create content that resonates with you. And don't forget, in the show notes, you can find all the relevant links mentioned in this episode, from accessing free downloads to visiting our website and more. If you have any questions or comments, we would love to hear from you. Simply send us an email. Our email address is hello at hollyandrobert.com. We're always excited to connect with our listeners. So until next time, thank you again for joining us on Between Over and Next. Thank you for listening to Between Over and Next, the podcast that navigates the twists and turns of life with courage, laughter, and a whole lot of inspiration. Tune in every Tuesday to hang out with Holly and Robert on your favorite podcast platform. Visit hollyandrobert.com and follow them on social media to ignite your passion and fuel your dreams.